The farmer's dream is to be able to produce abundant and regular crops from the land so as to better their lifestyle and their livelihood. But land is a fragile resource, subject to the vagaries of climate, minerals and the organisms that make it their home, as well as to the actions of the farmers themselves. Without regard for the needs of the land, farmers can and often have defeated their own ends, leaving vast tracts of previously fertile soil degraded and unproductive. In Brazil, this occurred in many places. Intensive farming with heavy machinery became counterproductive in spite of the addition of agrochemicals and the adoption of terracing. It led to the abandonment of many plots as farmers moved to the cities to try their luck elsewhere. But in the last 20 years, a new approach, the no-till method of farming, has given the soil a new lease of life and the farmers much hope for the future. Although this was not achieved overnight and demanded great commitments from the people, nowadays more than 12 million hectares of no-till fields are planted by Brazilian farmers. But what exactly is the no-till approach? As its name tells us, it is farming without turning over the soil. It relies on direct planting through permanent residue cover of the soil and crop rotation to achieve its goals. New equipment such as the roller knife was developed especially so small farmers can practice direct planting and manage the cover without using herbicides. This affordable equipment can be used either manually or with animal or mechanical traction. Originally an idea of the farmer Herbert Bartz, no-till was pioneered by a few innovative farmers such as Frank Dijkstra and Manuel Enrique Pereira. It has now attracted recognition and respect all over the world. On my farm, as well as in the region, Deforestation for agricultural purposes combined with plowing resulted in tremendous erosion, which had a direct effect on all of us. But we didn't understand this at the beginning. When the problem became serious, we tried to develop alternatives. This led to the no-till approach. In 1979, a group of farmers in the Campos Girais region of Paraná founded the Earthworm Club, named to symbolize the soil's central role of biological activity in sustainable and profitable farming. Gaining in popularity quickly, the club organized three national conferences, bringing together farmers, technicians and researchers from all over the country. Significant steps were made at this time to link technical development with economic development, to promote the cause and provide extensive training, all of which helped gain the confidence of skeptical farmers. In 1984, the ABC Foundation Training and Research Center was created by the farmers' cooperatives, illustrating how instrumental they were in driving the process forward. Fifteen years later, the no-till method has proven to be a major way of developing profitable agriculture in harmony with nature. This is now used by all small farmers, and we know it is a new vision for soil management, a new way of doing agriculture in balance with the environment. Using appropriate crop and residue management, the no-till method allows the natural growth of plants, the retention of nutrients, and the regeneration of the soil. If you prepare soil in a conventional way, it's like a barrel with a hole in the top and bottom that leaks and so needs more fertilizer and water. The direct planting system is like a closed barrel. You don't lose anything. The cycle of nutrients is totally closed off and it works much like a forest ecosystem. While it was promoted first on the medium and large farms, it was clear that the no-till approach had great potential for application to small holdings. 70% of Brazil's farmers have small plots, often in terrain with shallow, infertile topsoil, highly susceptible to erosion. Normally, the situation demands a high degree of labor, backed up by detailed technical information, as well as lines of credit if farming is to succeed. For many, this is not possible. Production costs inevitably rise, and the income falls, finally driving the farmers despondently off the land. The no-till system offers them new hope. For a small farmer to leave his conventional ways and begin using the direct planting system was very difficult. I didn't believe that it would work. For three years, my family and I worked alongside the technicians and the agronomists of Ayapar 
Learning from them, I started on a small corner of my land to see how it worked. There was two years of lost work. By the third year, it worked well. Now 100% of the farm uses the direct planting system. The collaboration of the farmers, scientists, and agricultural dealers has been crucial, especially for the small farmers. It enabled them to overcome the traditional blocks to their success, lack of labor, lack of enough scientific knowledge, and lack of credit. Farmers groups such as the Friends of the Land brought everyone together, helping farmers to organize, to feel confident about introducing new methods, and excited about achieving the goals of a better life and better environment. In 1982, six Friends of the Land Clubs were set up across the state Rio Grande do Sul in what was then called Development Polar Areas. By 1990, the clubs began to spread throughout Brazil. The local governments also helped with support for marketplaces, roads and equipment and subsidies to jumpstart the process, as well as regulations protecting forest reserves. At the municipal level, we knew we needed to make changes, but since we didn't know where to begin, we went to seek information from the technicians. The macro watershed approach was a practical way of implementing decentralization and handling not only the agriculture, but link necessities such as roads and transport systems. This integrated approach also enabled further exploration of relationship between rural and urban environment and did itself increase dramatically the potability of water. Due to this watershed management, the cost of cleaning water has been decreased by six times. The research stations were crucial for the diffusion of technological knowledge and one key to the success of the method has been the way they work closely and practically with the farmers as partners in applied research development. Participatory research has been developed integrating a new scientific base with the practical knowledge of the farmers. When it comes to the development of new equipment, there was no knowledge there. We have developed this on the farm with extensionists and local entrepreneurs. Specific winter and summer crops have also been developed. This has resulted in a big increase in the quality of the soil and a corresponding decrease in pest diseases and their impact on cash crops. The success of the system for the farmers has also led to an exploration of the commercial possibilities for their goods and a diversification of activities. Technological evolution must go on and we have to be able to respond to the global marketplace. The approach is now being taught in colleges and schools so that young people are prepared in advance to enter a working system. The agronomy course of the Universidad de Estatual de Ponta Grossa was created in 1983. All training now includes this system of soil handling. This also happens in the farm schools of the Campo Chirais region. So our students graduate with a strong knowledge of the direct planting system in the straw. International companies are also interested in what the small farmers are achieving in Brazil, helping with courses, training sessions, and the sponsorship of equipment, since they represent a significant potential market. Financial results show that the total costs of no tillage were over 30% lower than conventional methods, and the yield equal or even 10 to 20% higher due to simplified planting and weed control 25% of the fuel costs for machinery are saved. In addition, it is now well proven that the direct planting system reduces soil losses to erosion by 95% in Brazilian conditions. Less emission of CO2 and more accumulation of organic carbon above and below the topsoil makes no tillage a good friend of the environment and, when 12 million hectares are concerned, a remarkable partner in the combat against global warming. The success has attracted visitors from many countries to see firsthand for themselves what they might be able to achieve back at home. The Brazilian experience will help us organize and regroup and move from cooperatives to federations, which will enable us to be stronger, give us more purchasing power, and allow us to purchase materials which are not too expensive for us. Organization is very beneficial since if farmers group together, 10 of them say, can buy one machine. In Thailand, the possibility is there because at the moment, you know, there are some level of de decentralization that go down to the farm level. And the farmer is yearning and looking for alternative way. 
So it would be some kind of mechanism uh, that the, the authority will have to listen to the needs of the farmers. And if we feed them with this kind of new technology, the adaptation or the listening of the authority will go faster. Uh, we do realize also from this study tour that promoting such technologies like the uh, zero tillage and other uh, soil conservation practices, we would have to depart from business as usual and now be more participatory in our approach. We need to involve the farmers, the researchers, and indeed all the other stakeholders within the communities in the discussion to come out with the appropriate technologies to suit the localities within which they work. 25 years ago, Herbert Bartz had the vision to pursue these methods. He can feel gratified that his ideas are being taken around the world. The direct planting system is morally important because to have good results, it is very important to respect nature and treat her as we would want to be treated. No-till is a win-win situation. Besides giving the farmers a living and improving yields dramatically, the system protects the soil and improves its quality. Overall, it reduces costs and leads to an agriculture that is productive, prosperous and sustainable. Moreover, it is able to support the communities who will rely on their crops for generations to come. All this without degrading the most important life support system of our planet, the land.